And welcome to our time of worship. At this time, God calls us to gather together in the spirit of our homes, joining hands with those who have gone before us, right back to those who stood at the side of the road shouting, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. May God lead us through this day, through this week of drama, this season of both highs and lows that we're all experiencing. And let us follow Jesus into Jerusalem this day. You know, we have gathered here each week as together we have journeyed through the season of Lent. And so for just a moment, I invite you to close your eyes and let go of all those things that distract you and concern you in the mo this moment and just listen. The time is drawing near. Jesus is preparing to enter Jerusalem. How will we greet him? Will we follow him all the way to the cross? The power of Jesus is that he lived what he taught, even when it led to his death. He lived with an abiding awareness of God, radiating the light of God in all he said and did. But that light, that light was, was too much for the world. There are forces today, as there were back in ancient Judea, that conspired to put it out. And so I invite you to open your eyes and together let us see the light of this candle, the light of Christ, a light that cannot be overcome no matter how dark the road may be. Amen. Let us pray together. Almighty God, on this day, your son, Jesus Christ, entered into the holy city of Jerusalem and was proclaimed king by those who spread their garments and palm branches along his way. Let those branches be for us signs of hope in him and grant that we who bear them in his name may almost always hail him as our Lord and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life. Amen. Now, we might not be gathering in the same space, but we're gathering. And I wanted to just draw your attention to a few things of this past week. Well, on Monday, we gathered for our first Zoom teleconference and video conference, which was just fabulous. We had 16 people come online and join us in the conversation from 12 till 1230. And again, this is to happen on every Wednesday. Just a chance to chat, find out how people are doing. And, you know, we had Evelyn Lilly call us from all the way from up in Owen Sound. We had others checking in from Uxbridge and Ajax and Pickering and Toronto and Scarborough. And you know, it was just a nice light in our week to just reconnect, to see some faces or to hear some others' voices and just reassure one another that we are okay in this time. I've had many phone calls this past week with others to check on them and see how they're managing. And my prayer to all of you is just to continue to self-isolate the best you can and if you need anything, to reach out to those who are less vulnerable to do some shopping for you. I wanted to also draw your attention to our newsletter that you'll be either receiving by email or you'll have received in the mail. Um, I asked last week if um, any of you would like to share um, some information about how things are going, maybe a picture of, of what you've been up to. And in our, our newsletter this week, you're going to see a picture of uh, the Hornsby boys who have been uh, engaged at home the best they can. And uh, mom Katie mentioned to me this past week that uh, they have been having theme days. And so in the newsletter this week, you're going to see the, the boys uh, doing their space theme. 
And if there are others who would like to participate in this, I promise to include them in the newsletters in the coming week. I also uh, had a beautiful phone call just last night from Elena Mount up in Owen Sound as well and spoke with her daddy. And she told me all about the things that are happening up in Owen Sound and what she's been up to. And uh, again, a nice way to connect with, uh, with people from our congregation, certainly near and far. Um, I encourage you also, you'll notice in our bulletins uh, about givings. Um, whether or not we gather here in this space together, we are still doing God's work. We are reaching out to the community. We are keeping the lights on. We are making sure that this place stays viable going into the future. So I encourage you to please find the means to, to bring your givings to uh, Carol D's home and let her know if you're going to do that. You can mail them in. Uh, we certainly will be checking the mail as often as we can. Go on par, or you can also certainly donate through our website. Uh, a few other things that have been requested in our newsletter. Uh, we're looking to make masks to help out with the hospitals. They are starting to run low, and we have a pattern available for those that like to sew. This is a, a, an additional mask, if I'm understanding correctly, that goes over the antibacterial ones that are provided by the hospital in a way of uh, being able to recycle, reuse. These would be washed and used again. Um, and just to continue with the knitting of the baby hats, I know we won't be taking those to the hospital at this time, but if you like to knit and you're looking for a project, by all means, keep going at it. Babies are always being born and the hats are certainly cute. And the last, and certainly not least, and certainly the one of the, of, of the saddest of all these is just that Unfortunately, due to the continued need to be self-isolated, we will be postponing our services at the church until further notice. We will get in touch with you when we are able to open the doors wide and welcome you all back into this space. But worship will continue to be available to you online, through the, daily, through the weekly podcast, which is just the audio, and I will be mailing them out to those folks who don't have access to either one of those avenues. And so our worship continues in the light of all this. And so let us continue with our time together. And so the journey begins. Moses led the Hebrew people out of captivity in Egypt. But that was just the beginning of their journey. They traveled across a vast desert. They longed for a new place, the promised land, even as they doubted the wisdom of leaving what had been familiar. Faced with hunger and thirst, they were tempted to turn back, to give up. God was with them on the journey. They were fed with milk and honey of God's love. At the beginning of his public ministry, Jesus retreated to the desert for soul-searching, contemplation. He experienced hunger and thirst. He faced temptation. He faced his doubts and fears. God was with him on the journey. God gave him strength and wisdom for the journey. When we are hungry or thirsty or lost or weighed down by grief or fear, we are tempted to allow our doubts to rule us. We wonder about this journey of faith. God is with us on this journey. We have been fed with love and acceptance, even when we have run from God's love. Jesus travels, lead him to Jerusalem, built by the descendants of the Hebrews who journeyed out of Egypt. We walk with Jesus today. God is with us and leading us onward. And now, let us watch together as the journey arrives into Jerusalem with the Great Parade of Palms.
As is tradition at Heritage, we always have our own palm parade. It's so much fun to march around the congregation and sing together. And so with our donkey, let us join together as we sing one of our favorite hymns here at Heritage, He Came Riding on a Donkey. Please join me, let us sing. Palm Sunday. I know none of us ever had imagined in a million years that we would be celebrating Holy Week from our own homes. But I'm glad that everyone is staying safe and, and trying to keep healthy so that we will finally get back to some sort of normal before too long. So let us join together from where we are and imagine the day that first Palm Sunday was like. It was a day that started with a celebration of folks all coming together in one place. There certainly wasn't any, any sort of social distancing then. My goodness, I actually imagine people bumping and pushing and shoving into one another so that they could have the best spot to see Jesus coming into town. Jesus, the person who would change the way that they had been living, bring about the change they have longed for to, to give them hope. So where do we find that hope in the midst of all that we face this day? Well, one way is to look for glimpses of encouragement in communities all over the city. I wanted to share a few of those with you now. The first was a story shared on CTV News, a, a story from Toronto. As many parents are discovering, 
It's not easy explaining to children why they are no longer able to go to school, the local library, or to play with their friends at the park. One idea to keep kids occupied was to go for walks with their family. Some of these have sprung up and gone viral on social media. It's unclear who exactly started the going on a bear hunt game, but the simple idea to go searching for plush teddy bears in the windows of homes has taken off in communities around our world and including right where we live. Another story. Nobody can warm the hearts of frontline workers like children. An inspirational video was created by Alexa, a 10 year old who, who plays the harp quite beautifully. Alexa had started to write a song called Light in Darkness for a Kiwanis music festival that unfortunately was canceled. But she finished the song anyway and decided to dedicate it to all frontline workers around the world. Alexa's mom, in a conversation I had with her this past week, explained that she wanted to give other children an opportunity to say thank you as well. So she put out a call on Facebook. Soon there were more than 50 children with video messages of gratitude. After hours of editing by the two of them, the video was now posted on the Hometown Harpist Facebook page thanking all frontline workers, nurses and doctors, and those helping you to be registered in hospital, researchers and grocery store workers and journalists and parents and more and more. One last story from Concordon, Ontario. This one I thought was especially fitting as I'm sure you'll see in a moment. As many as 50 concarded businesses closed due to the coronavirus. And they took to the streets on Monday with a convoy of hope. Businesses and their owners hopped into their vehicles and drove through every neighborhood in Concarden morning to try and lift everyone's spirits by waving and honking their horns and playing music. We thought we could do something to lift the spirits of town people because they are down in the dumps. If they're stuck, we thought, let's come to them, said one of the organizers. Residents were asked to keep safe distance from the convoy as it rolled through Concordon subdivisions, but that didn't seem to dampen their spirits. We've encouraged everyone to stand out there front on their steps and wave or from their windows a business owner said. I'm sure this gave many people a reason to smile and lifted their spirits, at least for a while. And with no end in sight and no clear idea of when their businesses would be reopened, I'm sure this may not be the last COVID-19 convoy in Kincardine. As one participant declared, I think we'll just keep doing it and bring light to people. This Sunday marks the beginning of the Holy Week, a week that in which what we see is not what we get. What we might expect had we been one of those first followers is not the way it turns out in the end. Just when we think the story is going to go one way, we are surprised by a different ending. Maybe the ending we had wanted in the first place really wasn't the best ending after all. Can you imagine a city teeming with pilgrims, all fired up because it's a big festival, but also seething because the Roman soldiers are everywhere and everyone is constantly under threat. Given our circumstances, I'm sure you can. Matthew's gospel describes a city as being in turmoil one of the reasons was the arrival of Jesus on a donkey, reminding the people of the peaceful king in Zechariah, thumbing his nose at the Romans. Even if the Romans didn't realize the symbolism of the donkey, well, the Jewish pilgrims certainly did. The crowd is singing or shouting, Hosanna! 
some waving palm branches and palms, all generally causing a ruckus. If you were there, I'm sure you wouldn't be able to control yourself. You'd be craning your neck, trying to get a look or, or moving through the crowd to get closer. And there'd only be one thing on your mind. Who is this? Who is this? The people say to each other. Oh, he's a very dangerous and provocative man, said one, while another commented, no, 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 he's kind. He heals people and speaks with the authority of God. But for us, we come to this day every year, and every year we give out our palm branches and we, we get up and march around. It's fun. It's a great way to embody and to reenact a Bible story. But we're missing a couple of the key features. One is menacing Roman soldiers glaring at us, waiting for us to make a, a, the wrong move and be able to pounce on us and arrest us. Another is the sense that this really isn't a happy and fun event. It's highly politically charged with a deep sense of anger. Marcus Borg does a really good job of explaining the asp this aspect of Palm Sunday. This is what he says. The story is familiar as the week of Passover begins. Jesus rides into Jerusalem on a donkey and people cheer him, shouting, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Less well known, he says, is the historical fact that Rome, the Roman imperial procession was also entering Jerusalem for Passover from the other side of the city. It happened every year. The Roman governor of Judea, whose residence was in Caesarea on the coast, rode up to Jerusalem in order to be present in the city in case there were any riots at Passover, the most politically volatile of, of all annual Jewish festivities. With him came soldiers and cavalry to reinforce the imperial garrison in Jerusalem. It is clear what Pilate's possession was about. By proclaiming the power and, and pomp of the empire, its purpose was definitely to intimidate. But what about Jesus' procession, his entry into the city? His riding a donkey into Jerusalem echoes a passage from the prophet Zechariah that speaks of the kings commanding peace to the nations. Thus, for Passover that year, two very different processions entered Jerusalem. They proclaimed two very different and contrasting visions of how this world can and should be. The kingdom of God versus the kingdoms, the powers of the world. The former is about justice and the end of violence. The latter are about domination and exploitation. So it seems pretty clear that there is something disturbing bubbling up from under the surface. What do you think? Would you have entered the city if you were Jesus? It's hard to imagine putting ourselves in his shoes or sandals. Clearly, the thoughts of Jesus are not our thoughts. For some time now, Jesus has been telling the disciples plainly that it was absolutely necessary for him to go to Jerusalem, that he would suffer many terrible things at the hands of the, of the elders, the leading priests and the teachers of the religious law. He would be killed. But on the third day, he would be raised from the dead. But how is it that Jesus came to this conviction with regards to the events that were about to unfold? There isn't much written about Jesus during his early years, so where would he have been told how history would be played out? Well, there are the clues from the writings of the Gospels and from what was known as the servant songs in Isaiah's prophetic writings. I imagine from the teachings that had been he had received in his early years, 
and his baptism by John, that he would have come to understand that these writings were about him and God's will for the chosen Messiah. Early on, the disciples had eagerly embraced that Jesus was the Messiah, and he affirmed their belief was correct. Yet, when Jesus went on to speak of what was to come in Jerusalem, they seemed to be dumbfounded. Their understanding of the Messiah, they just didn't, it, that just didn't make sense. Peter even went as far as to rebuke Jesus, proclaiming that he was talking nonsense. So try to picture for a moment Jesus as the threshold of entering through the gates into Jerusalem. Put yourself in his place. I can imagine that the words of the one of the servant songs is on his mind and in his heart. That God has spoken to him and he has listened. So does he turn away? Will he go through the gates knowing what is to come? And then the answer from the scriptures comes to him. I did not turn away. And he moved forward. I am in awe that he entered Jerusalem that day. If I were standing at those gates knowing what he knew, I'm not sure that I would have had the courage to enter. Would you? When you think that he did this for us, we should all be forever humbled and grateful that he did not turn back. In our reading today, we heard how a, a very large crowd had spread their cloaks on the road and had cut branches from the trees like the ones we have here in our sanctuary and laid them before Jesus. The crowds that went ahead of him and those who followed behind were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Finally, they think our Messiah's triumphal entry into the city is here. But there is an uneasiness in the air as danger lurks not far away. In every word of good news, it seems trouble is never far behind. That is because there is another king riding into Jerusalem about the same time as Jesus. The Roman governor, Pilate, is making his way from his palatial dwellings on the Mediterranean Sea. I imagine he fought hard for his job and he enjoys its perks, his power and his prestige. So it would be understandable that he was going to do whatever he would, could to not let some self-proclaimed Messiah create trouble for him. So kingdoms are colliding here in Jerusalem. The city is in turmoil, it's the start of a perfect storm. And in the unfolding drama, as we continue our walk through this holy week, we will see whose kingdom stands for peace, whose kingdom loves its citizens, which king really wants nothing but good for his people. So we need to keep waving our branches and singing out loud and recall the sweet Hosanna in a world that is filled with turmoil and uncertainty. Our joys, like those the people experience on that first Palm Sunday, are mingled with our sorrows as we know that deliverance has a price to be paid. The mixed signals of Palm Sunday remind us that Courage and hope are never far removed from fear and evil. In fact, they are antidotes for it. And so as we proceed to the gates into Jerusalem with Jesus, we will witness the climax of his life and ministry. It is here that we will face all those difficult moments of the last days of his life. The betrayal. Being abandoned the angry mob, his torture and death. It is a message that we have to be reminded of and that sometimes things don't always work out the way we want or imagine they would. But above all, Palm Sunday reminds us that God's love is the one thing that makes sense out of human suffering and tragedy. 
God's love doesn't explain away all that, that of that and make it go away, but does make the difficult bearable. We see the hand of God reaching out, assuring us that we are never alone. So let us enter this week together boldly, empowered by the fact that as at the end of it, we will have the hope we need to carry on. Amen. Let us take a moment now to bring our prayers before God before we head back into our week. Let us pray together. Gracious and loving God, on this Palm Sunday, we have gathered here in this time of worship from our homes. Help us to feel renewed and blessed as we watch spring unfold around us. Like flowers reaching for the warmth of the sun, may we too turn our face to you and feel your presence in this time. Draw near to us now as we come to you in prayer, bringing hopes and concerns and doubts before you this day. God of all people, but we ask, how are we to pray in these times of pandemic when country after country imposes stringent stay-at-home orders? when schools and restaurants and businesses are closed and all public gatherings are banned, when what we do to relax and let go of tension, when the ways we come together to celebrate birthdays and weddings and graduations, when these have all been closed off, when life seems to be increasingly put on hold while we shelter in place, and even those who long like long stretches of time alone, are finding the walls starting to close in. May we be reminded in those moments that we are not alone. We live in God's world. God of each of us, how are we to pray when fears start to consume us? 
when we can't shake our worries about our own safety and the safety of those we love. When we are daily reminded of the risks taken by healthcare workers and grocery clerks and delivery people and emergency service providers and all other essential personnel. By remembering that we believe in God, who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the word made flesh to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the spirit. And so we trust in God. Compassionate God, we pray for those in need of your reassuring and healing presence. You know their concerns, their hurts and their burdens. Inspire in us the compassion and patience that we too can extend our hands to heal and comfort. Today we come to you with heartfelt prayers for those whose lives touch our own and whose needs and concerns are ours as we take a moment and silence to share their names with you. Loving God, we know that we are called to be the church, to celebrate your presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope. In life and death, in life beyond death, God, we know that you are with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. So receive the prayers we offer these de this day for all those in need in every place, because we know that your love will not be canceled. Songs will not be canceled. Hope will not be canceled. All this we pray through Jesus, who gave us the words to pray together. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to join me once more for a closing hymn this morning. Let us sing together all glory, laud, and honor. Let us sing.
And so it begins. We walk through this week from palms now to passion. It's Jesus as we seek. Each moment we walk through these days now with Jesus is, is time to see people the way Jesus sees us. To watch for the ones who need hope, who need kindness, seeking the light, not the darkness that blinds us. As you walk through these days, may the love you now know be spread to each person you meet on the go. And may God, who now blesses and keeps you in love, whose face shines upon you with grace from above, who looks on you with such joy and such favor, this God, three in one, gives you peace, life to savor. Amen and amen.